Hello, I'm Tammy Davis, and I really appreciate you joining me. If you're new to my YouTube channel, <clears throat> allow me just to briefly introduce myself. Um, 30 years um, in the field of essential oils and um, a clinical, master of clinical aromatherapist with a background in pharmacology um, and nutrition, as well as the study of the human genome. And um, a large part of my practice is, interestingly enough, within the Amish community. I um, feel so honored and blessed to be able to serve them at the capacity that I do. And um, through my work with them, and even on, with people outside of the Amish community, <clears throat> it's been a real push for me to actually help people be well. I, you know, basically my mission is to help people be well. Not that I'm the one being the one, helping them. I mean, I shouldn't say that. It's not like I am the instrument. It's, I am basically a guide. And um, in theory, the methodology that I practice, which is one that I've developed on my own, um, again, through 30 years of practice, study, application, reinventing, and so forth, researching even more. To this day, I consistently research because there's always more information, and truth be told, not one individual is like anyone else. So any one health condition, even though we recognize it as a specific label, such as blood pressure, diabetes, autism, it changes it varies between individuals you know we have noted that in autism we call it the spectrum disorders well in my in my world health is on a spectrum poor health is on a spectrum it, just health is on a spectrum in general just not from good to bad but everything in between all of these diagnoses we have they are on a range and so there's nothing that's the same and this is what actually brings me to the to this today because I'm um, currently um, putting all of my life's work into a book. The reason for that, again, it goes back to my mission being to help people be well. And um, this isn't to poo-poo any particular methodology at all. It's actually to bring it all together and actually help make sense of it all and really distill it down to why less is more. Um, I know that little phrase aggravates a uh, many good number of people and understandably so. I mean, really what does less is more mean? Yet it's really instrumental in, in the sense that it's a recognition that the body already is able to do what we think it's not doing that the um, body is not failing as we are particularly looking at it. It's maybe vulnerable, and yet in vulnerability there's power. There's a grace to vulnerability because there's an opportunity to contribute. And that's the whole purpose to synergescence. It's really um, teaching how this cooperative effort is what can take us from one place to the next and why less is actually more. Just a little bit of information goes a long way. And as I said, I was been um, working diligently on this book and um, because it's just time to release it. And what's really hung me up is the introduction because I don't want to stumble upon my, you know, I just, I want it, it's, well, there's the practice of perfection. <laughs> in my world. But beyond that, it's really learning how to say it because I don't want to offend anyone. I'm trying to deliver this message in a way that people can hear it and either apply it or not. But as I said, it's really about less being more. And through my work with individuals, you know, I'm often presented with people who are on medications. And yes, the Amish are on medications, you know, just like the rest of us need to take medications. I shouldn't say, well, not 100% of us, but you get what I'm saying, that there's a good portion of our population that has to take medications for these particular chronic conditions. 
the Amish are not immune to it. I know there's a lot of um, rumors, there's speculation that they're healthy because they're healthier because they live a healthy, sustainable life. But let's face it, they're exposed to the same environment that we are. Um, you know, air passes over my head, passes over their heads. So. You know, when you're spraying fertilizer over here, it's going to drift over there. You have plants releasing aromatics all over the place. So their world isn't any different than ours. They may make a lot of their own foods. They may grow a lot of their own foods. A lot of them are organic. A lot of them actually do use chemicals. But regardless, they're all exposed to the same environment. They do have their own level of mental and emotional stress. So there's a lot of components that bear similarity to what we're exposed to, and therefore their health is as challenging as anybody else's. So on that note, you know, like I said, <clears throat> cases will present with um, that are taking medications. And I guess one of my biggest um, pushes is to bring awareness to the need to pay attention to how we're combining everything. I realize there's an entire area called integrated or functional medicine, and they're working very hard to be able to integrate both natural and um, medical. Yet there's there's a gap. There's a huge gap, and the gap is that phytomedicine, which is what basically what I do, which is the inclusion of plants um, on the clinical level, is becoming practiced at home. You are more than likely using herbs and oils already. And if that's the case, you are practicing phytomedicine. Maybe not doing it with other people, but you're doing it for yourself. And understanding how you're doing that and truthfully, what it's doing to the system and how it's interacting is absolutely necessary. I've seen far too many interactions, and I spend way too much time with my head in the books, if you will, um, understanding the, the countless interactions that are um, potential, that, that they are potentially occurring. And here, here's a really interesting fact. We may say there's, you know, and the first medication that I have in my mind today is clonopin, and that's because uh, uh, one of my newest clients presented with that as, as they gave it to her for um, sleep. Um, although she's, you know, it's an anti-seizure medication, but she's using it for sleep. So anyway, um, she... The clonopin itself, pardon me, I had a little, I had a, a, I had a brain fart. <laughs> um, something went on pause for a moment. Anyway, so the clonopin itself has 532 potential known interactions. Now, this means this is what it's doing with various chemicals, medications. Um, sometimes they do know, and so let me just back up a minute here and say chemical is anything. If you're drinking a protein shake, you're drinking chemicals. Not that it's, you know, not that it's loaded with additives and preservatives. It might be something that you made. It might be something that, you know, you got <clears throat> some just straight whey protein and you added it to, you know, maybe some almond milk and some nut butters and some fruits and vegetables. And so you have this really great protein drink that you've made as clean as you can make it be make it out to be, pardon me, I'm stumbling over myself today, but that said, everything that's in that protein drink is a chemical. You know, vitamin C is a chemical. Um, so this is what I mean by chemical. Everything is a chemical. And um, the chemical has the potential to create signals depending on the type of chemical, meaning hypo, um, hydrophilic or lipophilic. Hydrophilic means it um, is drawn to water. Lipophilic means it's drawn to fats. And the fat soluble ones are the ones that are more like the signaling molecules or our hormones. <clears throat> At any rate, um, so what they look at when they start to list out interactions is they're looking at chemical interactions. And again, mostly it's with regards to um, medications, but then there's other references to be able to look, cross-reference herbs 
and um, very, it's, I may just say it this way, it's a little bit more difficult to find out which oils simply because they don't note the oils per se. And the reason for that is because oils oftentimes have overlapping constituents, meaning that if an oil has 100 constituents in it and another oil has 125 constituents, the possibility of having at least five overlapping constituents is pretty good. So looking up a particular oil would be futile, but you could, you know, but understanding the particular constituents and how they might be affecting the system is a good, you know, is a, is a start. So this is not what's happening and it needs to happen. And when I was working on this particular client and wanting to understand how clonopin itself is broken down in the system and what liver enzymes it's affecting, and this is where it gets really important. Um, well, there's a couple of important pieces here. So, and, and this is going to sound like I'm complicating health and our wellness. Um, and the fact is it doesn't have to be complicated. This is why less is more. Um, it's very simple. What's happened in our society is we have actually complicated matters with our technology. Um, that's just, that's just a fact. And that's just another fact. <laughs> We've complicated matters and therefore it's going to take some undoing of the complications in order to get back to a more simpler approach. Again, the reason why less is more, the less information that we put in the body, the more well equipped it is to actually make sense of what we're trying to help get it to do. So, um, on that note, with the clonopin, looking at the liver enzymes and paying attention to how this is being broken down was a necessary effort because at the next level, I had to look into plant constituents and how they, because folks, this is how they're, this is how we develop drugs. We look at a plant, we pay attention to, we understand that, I mean, they do, gas anal analyses of these plants. Why? Because they need to know what chemicals are in these plants and then they, they have a specific area that they're trying to affect and then they make notations as to which plant constituents are doing what. And therefore it's very important to begin to pay attention to how we are combining pharmaceuticals with phytomedicine Otherwise, we are setting ourselves up for even more issues, um, potential breakdowns. Because remember, if you've not seen any of my videos before, I talk an awful lot about how our genes, um, they can activate and deactivate themselves. Um, basically, they activate and deactivate themselves along the epigenome based on signals being sent by the body and or medications and or other environmental factors. So all of this plays into account as to how our system is adjusting accordingly. So therefore, if you're putting way too much information in there, you're putting in, you know, phytomedicine and natural, I mean, I'm sorry, and pharmaceuticals, and there's a clash the potential for increasing toxicity levels of the pharmaceutical is great. It's extraordinarily great. Or for that matter, weakening the effect of your pharmaceutical is just as great. This is why it's necessary, number one, to know, um, to have a better understanding of how plants are metabolized and how medications are being metabolized. And number two, the best effort that you can make with regards to phytomedicine is to help use it in a way that brings balance to the system. A really good example is, well, in the case of clonopin, it, um, like I said, that one actually has 532 known interactions. So let me just say this, that's, that's what they know. And then how any other person, how any one person is going to react is completely unpredictable because your genome is not like anybody else's. Your genome is your fingerprint on who you are right here, right now. And so how any one medication or plant is going to affect your system is unpredictable. So again, less 
is better. Less is more. And then, you know, you know, I don't want to say if you don't get results, increase the amount. I would just find some way to trust that you're doing, the body can do what it's supposed to do. In my mind, the amount of control that we're trying to exert on the human body is a complete disrespect of the divine in a way that we are created as we are on purpose. There's an intention to why I am the way I am. There's an intention as to why you are the way you are. And from and again, in my mind, the degree of control that we're trying to influence upon the human body is a major red flag. It's a signal that we just don't trust what we've been given and that we know better. <clears throat> and I just have, I take issue with that because truthfully, we don't know any better. I mean, we can sit here, if we actually took a cue from nature and just sat here and watched nature for a while, we would actually see that Nature doesn't judge anything as good or bad. It just responds to what is, and it it moves accordingly. Um, we can talk about, you know, animals, and, you know, yes, there's some aggressive nature within the animal kingdom, just like there is within the human. I mean, there's definitely not any in the plants. But within the animal kingdom, there's an aggressiveness. But you know what? Once the aggressiveness has come to an end, the species just stay apart they don't try you know it's not like you got a lion looking at a gazelle or a gazelle looking at a lion and thinking jesus christ you're just a, you know you're just you're just an asshole no the gazelle goes on and the lion goes on at some point they're going to come back you know if other animals get into a fight, they go their separate ways. You know, yes, there's aggression, absolutely. And that's not to say that they're not being affected by, you know, the, the level of environmental stressors that we are putting out there. <clears throat> so that's going to affect their emotions and their reactions. So again, nature is designed to adapt. And this is the reason why medications are unpredictable. And so it's better to be to err on the side of caution than it is to go full board and just mix everything together. And um, I had a, I'm sorry, my screen froze up and I have no idea what happened. Anyway, so on that note, um, doing the opposite of the medication. So like I was saying, in the case of clonopin, clonopin is a benzodiazepine. That means it's really having a direct effect on the GABA receptors primarily. And I mean, there's, um, and it's the way it's been broken down. That was my biggest concern. <clears throat> um, if you're taking a serotonin reuptake inhibitor, which is an antidepressant, you don't want to use oils that are known to influence the, you know, influence the production of serotonin. You want to find a way, maybe balance the digestive system, support the neuroendocrine system from a just a um, kind of modify. I guess help to stabilize it. And there are oils that you can do that with. Um, um, I'm trying to think of. I'll put some notes in the in the box below about some potential oils that would be great for just stabilizing the immune system and um, as well as the hormonal system and even maybe suggest some that would be supportive of the digestive system there again to do it that way helps the body begin to break our foods down in a more appropriate way so that we can actually make the chemistry that's required that will support the medications. So keep in mind, this isn't about stopping medications. This is about learning how to bring balance to the system and use them in a more mindful way. There's a lot of courses out there that are trying to teach us how to use essential oils and why they're great. And that's fabulous. I completely agree with that. But we need to take it to the next level because with such an introduction of use of herbs and oils, we really have to find a better way, like I say, to support the pharmaceuticals that we're using. And again, that's not for, you know, not everybody, but when I know that somebody's doing everything they can to be healthy and yet they still end up on medications, 
the very first question is why am I having to deal with this? What's wrong? You know, what's wrong? Um, and we start to look at it as systems failing. And the fact is it's not the system failing. It's actually just a form of, it's just a sign of miscommunication. That's how I want to label that. It's not a failure. You know, it may be weak, but again, there's power and vulnerability because if we actually see the vulnerability as an opportunity for us to contribute and we take, again, our cue from nature and learn how to go with the flow instead of being rigid in our approaches, we might actually find a better way to, to wellness. So that's my little um, tidbit for today because, like I said, oils are metabolized and broken down just like pharmaceuticals are and so are herbs every chemical is every food is broken down that way so we need to be aware um, of what's going on and and avoiding those potential clashes so if you have any questions by all means let me know like I said in the box below you'll find some oil suggestions that won't necessarily compromise your medications and um, if it's something more specific that you would like to know about for yourself, you're welcome to email me, but I can't do a full assessment for you unless we, I get you to, you know, you provide me with a lot of information, in which case you would need to set up an appointment with me. So um, I hope this is helpful. And again, if you have any questions, by all means, let me know. My name is Tammy. I look forward to hearing from you. Synergessence.com. Bye now.